In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> Olivia and Claire were getting ready for their school play. It was the Christmas story, and they were very excited about the roles that they would play. Olivia was going to be an angel, and she had looked forward to that role because she envisioned how an angel should act. But Claire, Claire had the lead role. Claire was going to play Mary. All was going well backstage when one little boy, and you've got to realize these kids are about five years old now, and one little boy keeps traipsing back and forth and claiming, I'm a sheep. You know, it's, it's really hard to be a sheep. Claire and... Well, Claire was getting a little tired of this. But Olivia just shrugged her shoulders and said, That's nice. That's nice. Oh, it's really hard to be a sheep, he said, coming up to Claire. Well, you know, it's really hard, too, to be a virgin, <laughs> she said innocently. Sometimes it is hard to understand our roles, especially when we're told on Christmas that God came to us in flesh. That's what incarnation is. That's what the birth of Jesus is. God with skin on. God in the flesh. And if we can grasp that, then we understand the full meaning of this day. And we understand the revelry that sometimes go with the Christmas days, and we are beginning the season of Christmas, you know, really pales in the light of the real story of God coming down and becoming one of us. It means that we're going to put ego aside. It means that we're going to try to connect with the one who tried desperately to connect with us and will if we let him. Corey Tin Boom used to like to tell the story about a monk. A man who always sang there on Christmas Eve. And he had a raspy voice. He didn't sound all that great. But they couldn't find anyone else that would sing. And so they were stuck with him. But he'd been singing that time for years. And they had kind of gotten used to it. But they wished they had a really good singer. And then one Christmas, they found a man whose voice boomed and was magnificent. And so they said to Earl, I don't believe we're going to use you. But we, we have, we found somebody new. We've found, found somebody, I believe, that's going to bring the crowds in because, you know, we have a lot of visitors. And that's important. And the man sang, and did he ever sing? Oh, everyone was mesmerized by his voice. The next morning when an angel appeared to Mother Superior, the angel said to her, Why did you have no Christmas song last night? 
No Christmas song. We had the most beautiful Christmas song we've ever had in years, and we had a man who delivered that song in such a magnificent tone. What do you mean we had no Christmas song? And he said, we didn't hear it. We've been hearing it all these years, but we couldn't hear that one. You see, the man who sang that night sang for his own glory. The other man has delivered his message to God. And so that's where we are today. That's where we are on Christmas Day, trying to figure out who we are as we unravel our relationship with him and maybe not take too much pride in who we are and a little more concerned about who he is. A little bit more concerned about the babe that was born on this day that was born the full purpose of dying for us. The Christmas story I remember from so many years ago. So at first on United Press International, back when I was in broadcasting, and I have loved it. I'd like to share it with you. It's about a man Didn't come to church very much, and when he did, he did it to please his wife, because he didn't believe a lot in that churchy kind of stuff, you know, the incarnation about God, about God be becoming a man. That didn't really gel. Oh, but he would come. He would come to please her, and it was just something this Christmas Eve. Something about going to the midnight mass. It didn't strike too well with him. And so he said, I, I just don't want to go tonight. You know, I, every time I go, I feel like a hypocrite. I just don't believe in this incarnation stuff. Now, I, I will go from time to time, but I'm not going tonight. You all go. Take the kids. I'll wait up for you. And so they drove away. And he went to his easy chair there before the fire. And he was reading his newspaper when, when he noticed the snow was coming down pretty hard. He went to the window and looked out, and he was seeing it was building up, building up. Oh, wow, this is, this is going to be a snowstorm. But he went back to his chair there by the fire, and continued to read until he heard a thud, a thud, another thud, a thud, a thud, a thud. And he, he thought maybe it was kids. <laughs> they, they had come around and they were throwing snowballs at his window. So he went to the door to see what was going on and he opened the door. And it was a flock of birds. A flock of birds who were were flying against the window, trying to get in. They thought they could get in from the cold through the window. Oh, my gosh. Snow is getting deep out there. They, these little birds are going to freeze. They're so cold. 
He had an idea. He said, you know, if, if I go to the barn and, and I open the, the barn door wide open, the barn there where uh, the kids keep their ponies, I can open that door really wide and I can turn on the light and the birds can go in there and the birds will be warm. And so he did. And he went to the window to watch the birds go into the barn. But they didn't. They still were frailing around out there in the snow, still getting colder and colder and perhaps about to freeze. Well, well I don't know why they, maybe they're hungry or, or maybe they will just follow the food. And so he went in, he got some bread and he started making breadcrumbs all the way from his door. to the barn and he went to the window to watch the birds then go into the barn but they didn't well I'll go out and I'll, I'll circle them and I'll just shoo them I'll shoo them into the barn and so the birds started going everywhere except into the barn. He said, what can I do? What, what can I do? And it was then that he realized that the birds were afraid of him. He thought, oh, wow. If I could only be a bird. If I could only be a bird and and they could see, and they could hear, and they could understand. But I'm not. If I could only be one of them, I could save them. And just then, he hears the bells from the church. Adeste Fidelis. Bringing out the glorious news of the birth of a Savior. Of a God. Who loved us so much that he put on skin to become one of us so we could know him. And there, hearing the sounds of the bells against the rush of the wind, he fell to his knees in the snow. Amen.